You're listening to the Holo Health Podcast with Alex Cottingham and Trevor Deal. We know that health is hard and confusing, primarily because we lived it. It's part of our story, and we struggled for years until we discovered a better way. On this podcast, we cut through the noise of culture, talk about health the way God designed it, and how you can pursue it. If you're a Jesus follower who cares about your health, then you're in the right place. Get ready for the tangible and actionable steps to build a body, mind, and soul that you're proud of, or as we like to say, so that you can become truly healthy. Let's dive into the show. Welcome back to another episode of the Holo Health Podcast. I'm Trevor, one of your hosts, joined by my good friend and co-host Alex Cottingham. Today we are going to be talking about where to start. If you're new to this health thing, where to start. If you've been around for a long time, you need to make sure that you're doing these things on a regular basis. These are the bare minimums. We're going to give you two things that no matter where you are in life, these should be your non-negotiables. If you want to live a truly healthy life, if you want to follow Jesus and steward each area of your health well, these two things should be what you're focused on at a bare minimum. Alex, before we jump into today's conversation, if you had to give the listeners an insight on what practically they're going to walk away with from this episode, what would you say? Uh, clarity. Clarity is king, clarity is kindness, and clarity gives you at least for me, it gives me the momentum to move forward because the overarching question behind this is where to start is there's questions and there's confusion. But after this episode, they'll have clarity on, on what that is. Alex, you're spot on. The clarity is very important. And as we step into this conversation, I want to just I want to just vision cast listeners for you for a little bit. The whole the whole focus of Holo Health is to help Jesus followers become healthy in every area. We're looking at health through the lens of what did God design it? How did he design us to live? What are rhythms that change the trajectory of how we live here on earth? We're not just trying to optimize our life to become more optimal human beings. We're trying to become more accurate representations of Jesus. And there are rhythms that help us do that. Okay. And we learn that through science and scripture. So we're, we're not just a podcast that's just regurgitating a lot of health and wellness conversations and, and information, education, tips, tricks, all that great stuff. Sure, we're going to include a lot of that material, but we look at it through the lens of health in every area of true health, of God's design. So that's what we're doing today. The two things, Alex, that I want us to talk about that are, that are the, the keystone parts to starting to live a truly healthy life and continuing to live a truly healthy life are these two things. One is going to be abiding in Jesus. Two is going to be moving your body. I want to talk about why those two things are the keystone habits, Alex, but I want you to start initially by talking about number one, abiding in Jesus. Through our lens, let's talk about why that's the first non-negotiable of starting out and continuing to live a truly healthy life. The term abiding comes from John 15, and I'm pulling it up here. I believe it's John 15, 5. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, or other translations say, if you abide in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not abide in me, you are like a branch that's thrown away and withers. So like branches are picked up and thrown in the fire and and burn. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it'll be done for you. This is my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. That is, uh, that captures true health perfectly because our source of our health, the reason for our health, the motivation for our health is not us. When we are connected to the vine, because we are the branch, we have nutrients we have vision we have wonder we have capacity we are living life to the full and that life to the full does not come from culture does not come from self does not come from willpower that comes from abiding in jesus so abiding if you google it just means to make your home in dwell rest in that your inner 
resting place is the inner trinity that god jesus and the holy spirit when you come and just sit and in silence you're in the presence of god himself and we're not just talking about quiet time a lot of people think oh yeah then i just got to read the word and i just got to like take 10 minutes and pray this is not, this is different than that we're talking about Tell us the why. natural because those are spiritual disciplines that eventually lead to abiding which ultimately encompasses our presence our communication our posture our sights in jesus there is a way to view through the world's lens and through god's lens so when we are abiding we are essentially staying rooted in jesus himself and there's a way to do this it's not just in the in the morning or in the evening by yourself when i am washing dishes i can abide when i am mowing the lawn i can abide when i am doing a workout i can abide it's a heart posture thing it's a perspective thing it's a focus thing um and the last thing i'll say trevor is something that just completely slipped my mind i was really excited to say this last piece and it <laughs> just slipped my mind it'll come back later but about yeah. in this crucial it comes from john 15. yeah i mean i think that's a great explanation alex and I want to press in a little bit more on this because again, it, it, abiding can just be this confusing thing for a lot of individuals, but I want to talk a little bit more about what it looks like throughout the day. I know you gave a few examples of like practically like, Hey, what does it look like to abide in Jesus throughout the day and why this is so important when it comes to our health? Obviously like this is the lens in which we now see God, ourselves, and the world. It's it's not it's not our own eyes. It's through another lens. It's almost like we put on contacts and our vision is from our own blurriness to clarity, just like you said at the start of this episode, in what in who Jesus is, in our identity in Jesus. And how do we operate in the world? What do we see? How do we how do we love as a husband, a, a father, a friend? How do we work? How do we how do we do life? And so I want to talk practically a little bit about some some kind of rhythms inside of abiding that people can engage in. Like, hey, I'm starting out. I, I do want to abide. I'm not regularly spending time with Jesus. I'm not regularly uh, being with him, abiding in him. I want to start somewhere. Where are we starting? Trevor, I remember what I was going to say. And you just jogged my memory before we get into some practical I figured I would. Is early church fathers called it practicing the presence of god that's another term to think about it's different than your quiet time or praying or journaling it's practicing the presence of god it's a practice it's not just some people have a skill and some people don't it's not just a, oh hey like i'm jesus wipe me clean and i can go do whatever i want no it is a practice that we intentionally work towards to remind ourselves of the presence of God. The analogy that I like to think about is marriage. It is the best analogy that if I am gardening, if I am digging up plants in my garden and doing that by myself, that's one thing. But when my wife comes and joins me and we're working together and I'm holding back the soil and she's putting it in and we're working together, like we are with each other. We are abiding with one another that I'm taking into consideration the fact that she is with me, we're on the same team, and we want what's best, and we want to accomplish his goal, and she's just, we're together, I'm being with her. That's the exact same thing with Jesus. If I am gardening, or mowing, or working, or working out, I'm just inviting Jesus into this reality, and then ultimately asking, okay, what does love require of me? If Jesus were me, what does this look like? What what would God say about this? So, um, I just like to think of like it is literally doing life with Jesus and staying at the root of him. So what does this practically look like? Trevor, I'd love for you to kick it off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned the spiritual disciplines. We can see those in scripture. Okay. Listeners, we pull these from scripture abiding. 
we look at the life of Jesus to learn what he's inviting us into. Where is he, where is he calling us to respond in obedience? Again, all of this is out of a place of love. We realize what grace and truth is in the gospel. We realize our identity now in Jesus Christ. Now what he is asking us to continue to run the race with endurance, to pursue him, to abide in him. And so practically we see in scripture some of these spiritual disciplines that allow us to do that. Right. Just like Alex said, in using the lens and the, the analogy of marriage, Alex spends time with Hannah or I spend time with Aaron. Right. We sit there and we eat a meal together or we go on a walk together. We put away our phones. We, we ask each other deep conversations and sit to pause and listen to soak in what the other person is saying. So just like there's simple, small things you can do with your spouse to abide in your marriage, to grow in, in, in deep intimacy with your spouse. It's the same with Jesus. Just because he's not here, the Holy Spirit dwells within you. And through the Holy Spirit, you create intimacy with Jesus. And so a couple of spiritual disciplines that come to mind, I think the, the best places to start are going to be opening scripture in reading God's word. That's going to allow you to read and understand who Jesus is, what he is calling you to do today in life. And, and of course, he speaks specifically to people, to Pharisees and parables, his disciples. But there, there is context and application for us today. And that happens through reading, seeking to understand, asking the Holy Spirit to reveal what is God, what is Jesus saying to me? So reading God's word is, is what I believe is a cornerstone part of abiding in Jesus. Because if you don't, if you don't set up something for you to set your mind on truth, then you're not going to accidentally drift there. I, mm -hmm. You just will not. We talk about it all the time. The cultural undertow will pull you away from true health. We're talking about health in every area. It starts with Jesus. It starts with your identity in him. Spending time in God's word is going to open the door for more and more abiding in Jesus. Not just in that moment, throughout the whole day. Now, I could go a little bit further into that if you want me to, Alex, but that's the first one I'm, I'm definitely punching from a practical perspective. Yeah, scripture is a huge one. Um, for me personally lately, it's been silence and solitude. It's not just an escape from the busy hustle bustle of culture, but it allows me to remove the distraction and the noise both internally and externally to actually focus on him because god is working whether we are aware of it or not mm -hmm. and i just want to slow down and become aware of what he's actually doing and how i'm actually abiding in, or what i'm actually abiding in so um taking the time especially in the morning just to recenter and yeah prayer typically envelopes this but just calming the mind surrendering the fears sitting in silence with no phone no distraction um really opens up opportunity for the holy spirit to speak and i'm not saying mm. that there's revelations every single morning i'm saying that i'm just reminded of his truth i'm reminded that in the ang anxious moments in the morning that he's the good shepherd and I and I have everything I need mentally, physically, emotionally, relationally, spiritually in Christ. But I'm reminded of that truth because I've given myself space to go there yeah. um, and for the Holy Spirit to work. So that's another one. Yeah. And to kind of piggyback on that, the silent solitude is just people talk about quiet time a lot, but that's just kind of like the more modernized I guess our uh, verbiage around that, but silence and solitude is not new. If you look at Jesus, he would perform miracles or he'd spend time around large groups of people. He fed the 5,000 and then what did he do? He withdrew to solitude in a quiet place to be with the Lord, to set his mind on truth, to be refreshed in the spirit, to fill his cup up and to use our language so that he could pour out again. Jesus was both man and God. And so he recognized as a man, the rhythms that brought life and abundance into his life. And just because he was God, didn't mean that he needed to not pursue those anyway. And he also demonstrated that for the disciples. And then he demonstrated that for us as well. The last thing I would say here, or before even doing that, Alex, Hey, if you're listeners, if you're someone who's practicing silence and solitude, or if you're reading the word and then you're like, okay, I'm going to sit for a minute and just rest and be in the presence of God and his love. If you're doing that, or if you've tried it, or maybe you're nervous about trying it, 
uh, I've been there as well. I'm sure Alex has been to a couple of recommendations I have is to put the phone in another room is to find a consistent place that is primarily distraction free. And I would encourage you just to have a journal next to you. And if anything pops up in your mind that is, is distracting you from that time with the Lord, it could be great things or it could be maybe stressful things. Just write them down on that sheet of paper in your journal. That's almost like a, a hey, I'm going to lay this down for right now, but I'm remembering it and I'll come back to it. But I'm just going to set this down right now because this, my workout that's coming up or that big project that I have to do later today is important, but not as important as me spending this time abiding, being alone, being quiet and being in the solitude before the Lord. So that's just like a practical thing that I've experienced. And, and someone mentioned to me, it was very helpful. I want to share with you listeners. The last thing I'd say on abiding, Alex, I mean, we could go on and on about abiding, but I want to get to the movement piece here because, again, these are two non-negotiables on, on where to start and how to keep living a truly healthy life is to spend time in community with like-minded followers of Jesus. I think we miss that a lot. But abiding in Jesus is not just only like you, you spend time with other people who love the Lord. You feel refreshed. You're reminded of truth. They're able to, in a gentle and loving way, hopefully, call out lies and remind you what truth is. They're also able to deeply know you and, and grow in those communal relationships. Relational health is a part of a truly healthy life. So I would just tack on there. Yeah, spending time in God's word, silence and solitude through prayer and contemplative prayer. And then just living in community with others is just going to be so crucial for abiding. Just a couple, three things that you could hit into the bigger picture or the bigger keystone habit of abiding. Trevor, the only, the only thing I would add is there's not an exhaustive list. We just highlighted three, there's right. a dozen, if not more. And all they, all the spiritual disciplines are is observances of Jesus's life and modernizing them in our current world to be with Jesus, become like him and do what he did. Any one of Jesus's behaviors could be a spiritual discipline because they're all a means to an end that if me cooking dinner for my family helps me go closer to Jesus because it can remind me of generosity and service and love, then great. It's a means to an end. It's a spiritual discipline. But there's just right. some big hitters that kind of move the needle a little bit more. But I think we hit the nail on the head there, Trevor. Um, I think it'd be great to move on to exercise. A movement. Yeah. Well, movement does include both movement, physical activity, and exercise that fall under that bucket of movement. And the reason this is a keystone behavior is because movement is literally medicine. Whether it's getting 8,000 steps a day or getting in an early morning workout, it needs to be contextualized for your goals. If you don't have a lot of time and you're, you're kind of capped at one certain thing, my personal recommendation would be to exercise and make the most of that time through exercise just from the benefits that it would bring you know, holistically to your life, but also moving. You can move in smaller pockets throughout the day, whereas maybe you don't have 20 or 30 minutes uh, at multiple times during the day to be able to get a workout in. But here's the deal when it comes to movement, this is a keystone behavior. And here's why. When you move your body, you are improving each area of your life. We're just going to go through the seven habits of health and pull out moving often, habit number three. If you move often, you're expending more energy, which at the end of the day is going to make you more tired. If you're more tired, you're going to go to sleep and have a good night's rest because you have expended that energy. You're not going to continue to stay up late. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, but overarchingly, exercise or movement throughout the day does lead to better overall sleep. If you look at eating clean, habit number two, the way the way movement impacts that, Alex, is you are more likely to want to maximize the time that you just spent by making good nutritional choices. It allows your mindset to say, I just did something beneficial for me there. I'm going to do something beneficial for me here and throughout the rest of the day. If you go to increase clarity and decrease stress, exercise decreases stress. It allows endorphins and hormones to be properly fueled and function and moved throughout the body so that you can reduce stress or anxiety that you may have. And because of you getting exercise in, you respond, your body responds with more mental sharpness and clarity throughout the day. If you look at relationally, you go to CSNF, Coming Street and Fitness, the gym that Alex owns. You hit a workout, class workout with somebody. That's all you can get in for the day. That's okay because you're spending time with people. It's benefiting your relational health. 
And then embracing purpose, again, exercise or movement, physical activity is going to allow you to see in the bigger picture in your life and give your best to that bigger picture. Hey, I did something hard over here. I filled my cup up. Now I'm able to do something hard or challenging or demanding to pour out love throughout the day. You're embracing purpose. So this habit alone, of course, abiding, but also in conjunction with movement is a keystone habit. It impacts every area of your life. And it's a phenomenal starting point. So I have very little to add to that. I think you hit a home run. I mean, the only argument I can see people making is like, well, you need to, nutrition is important too. Where yeah. it is, it's obviously one of the seven halves of health. But when it comes to keystone habits, keystone habit is just the first domino in the line of dominoes. That's all it is. It's something yeah. that has a disproportional impact on the others. Science has shown that exercise is more of a keystone habit than nutrition. They both are, but just for whatever reason, when you move your body consistently, it fuels you to eat well and to sleep and to improve relationships and decrease stress and all that more so than nutritionally. And just anecdotally, just from my own personal experience, I have seen that to be true. There have been many people in my life that are doing a diet or trying to eat clean without movement or very sedentary behaviors that it has not trickled down into other areas of their life. But the but I have found more commonly that when the habit and routine of consistently moving and exercising often is in place, way more dominoes are are hit than other yeah. ones. Not to say yeah. that we're against it because obviously we're for it. It's very, very important. It's just it's just the evidence. Yeah. And if you're limited on time, my recommendation would actually for it to be exercise rather than steps in some capacity. And that's just going to have a, a larger scale effect on you than just going for a short walk. Just the benefits of moving functionally and the way that that benefits the body, your ability to move, your capabilities to meet the demands of life externally or outside of the gym. Exercise is going to be your biggest bang for your buck, your keystone habit, however you want to uh, however you want to articulate that. But again, Alex, these are things that are kind of like the bare minimums of like, Hey, we're, we want to live a truly healthy life. Where do I start? Let's start on these couple of things. And then if I want to continue living a truly healthy life, these two things are part of living a continued, truly healthy life, becoming truly healthy. It's not become it's becoming because it's a process. It's a continued pursuit, right? So these are these are keystone parts of it. They're in our seven habits of health. It's in all of our language and curriculum, our resources. But the reason we wanted to articulate this is because, hey, listeners, if you're trying to start, this is where you start. Hey, listeners, if you've been doing these things, don't stop doing these things. On the days that you don't have the capacity to do more, try to do these too, because they go far further and have far greater of an impact on your health in the long term and your identity than not doing them. These two things, these keystone habits, we just told you why. We just told you why abiding and movement have these significant domino effects in your life. The bonus keystone habit would be, in my opinion, Alex, to eat a nutrient-dense breakfast. To eat yeah. a nutrient-dense breakfast is to eat proteins, fresh fruits and or vegetables, and some whole grains at breakfast to start the day. Not to miss breakfast, not to skip breakfast, but to eat breakfast and let it be made up of whole, clean, real foods. Here's why. Because that's going to have a domino effect again on the nutritional choices you make throughout the rest of the day. We do it with our one-on-one -on -one clients. We do it with our collective members. These three things, that's the bonus. If you're listening, you're like, I need a little bit more. There's your little bit more. Eat a nutrient-dense breakfast. Find a protein source that you enjoy. Put it on the plate. Try to make a third of it at least made up of that protein. Find a, fr a fruit and or a veggie, both, one or the other. Put it on the plate, the ones you enjoy. Find you a whole grain you enjoy in the morning. Put it on there, okay? Start the day off really strong when it comes to nutritional, and it's going to benefit the other things. We're nourishing right there, our body, mind, and our soul. It's impacting every single area. That's just where to start. You could live there your whole life. And you would be living a truly healthy life. It would significantly impact the way that you experience health today, in the future, and the way that you understand health to be health in every area. 
So if I am, as we're closing here, Trevor, if I were like, okay, how do we do this? What's the plan? Here is the most basic thing, okay? Simple is sustainable. I would start in a gospel, and I would read a chapter a day. Mm. If you don't know what a gospel is, it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. There are eyewitness accounts of, well, there are, there are accounts of um, Jesus' life. Um, start with John, start with Mark. It does not matter. Just pick a gospel, spend time in it, and pray over it. 15 to 30 minutes, done. 30 minutes of movement, whether you exercise, whether you go on a walk, whether you play a sport, just move. We actually have a guide that helps you do this. And I know Trevor is going to kind of talk about that later, but I'm I'm kind of sick and tired of time being such an excuse to people being so busy because I've been doing a lot of research on screen time and movies and series and social media consumption. But the average person spends two and a half hours on social media a day. And I'm like, if the average person spends two and a half hours a day on social media, you can carve out an hour of those for 30 minutes of abiding and 30 minutes of movement. That is the bare minimum. So yeah. it's not a matter of time. It's a matter of what you're doing at that time. That is the bare minimum that you can start doing. Yeah. No, you hit the nail on the head. And then after you do that, you're going to make a healthy breakfast if you're trying to take on number three and kick off the day. Here's where we'll end the episode, listeners, is – we know that you want to be healthy. We know you want to get help right. It can be hard. It can be confusing. If you're trying to do it alone, it makes it even harder because you're wasting your time. You're guessing instead of following a proven framework. You're doing it alone so you feel isolated and you don't have the accountability or the motivation to continue. So we decided to do something about this. We realized that not everyone needs one-on-one -on -one coaching, but everyone needs resources and accountability and w knowledge and a framework on how to get health right today, tomorrow, down the road. And people need that. You might need that. And if you need that, we've done something about it. We've created the collective membership, which includes everything you need to become truly healthy without the coaching, without the one-on-one -on -one coaching. And here's what I mean by that. We have put workouts. We've got workouts that have three different tracks, CrossFit, bodybuilding, and at home. We've got nutritional guides. We've got guides for if you're busy, how to spend your time. We've got excerpts from books that Alex has written. We've got the full books themselves. You've got access to our three-part, three, three part, three step framework on how to become truly healthy, all wrapped up inside of a community that you get access to of like-minded believers who want to get health right, will want to pursue health the way Jesus designed it in every single area. Inside of that community, we're holding each other accountable through challenges, coaching calls. We we're, we're, have a chat room where you can make available to c get access to coaches or other members to ask questions. We are here to provide every single resource you need to live a truly healthy life. That's the whole of collective membership. And if you're interested in getting health right, if you're done with the hard and confusing, if you want to live a truly healthy life in every area, then go click the link in the show notes. We are releasing this 2.0 version of the Holo Collective membership, and you don't want to miss it. If you act soon, you will lock in a rate, a monthly rate that is going to be such a steal for the value that we have packed into inside of this community and this offering, but really is so that you can surround yourself with like minded people and get health right. Alex, well, add, it, add on, anything? Baby. Come on. No, that's it. It's all the tools that you need to succeed, that if you're a go-getter and you want to get health right, this is exactly for you. You want to achieve a body, mind, and soul you're proud of. This is it. Because we have two We have two things. We have this without the coaching. We have this with coaching. But if you need accountability and a coach that reach specific goals and go through the framework with someone, that's what that's for. But as far as just the tools, we have given you every single tool and more. I mean, Trevor, you left out podcasts, you left out playlists, you left out um, um, different PDFs, cheat sheets, um, ebooks, not just the digital books, but ebooks as well. Like, there is just a library of stuff that um, is all yours to use. So go check it out. 
go check it out. There's the coaching or the collective memberships below. Again, different accountability levels. Click those links to check it out. And then Alex mentioned the 60 minute busy person's guide to a healthy or truly healthy life. I put that in the show notes as well for you to access. We hope you enjoyed this. Remember, wherever you're starting or if you want to continue living a truly healthy life, abiding in Jesus and moving your body on a daily basis are two things that should be non-negotiables for you. We'll see you in the next episode.